So, so this is 3.9 cell transport. How is a cell membrane like a castle wall? The walls of a castle, like the cell membrane, are designed to keep out dangerous things. Whether you're concerned about an enemy army or a disease-causing bacteria, you don't want to allow everything to enter. However, in order to survive, there are some things that the cell, or the castle, does need to let in. Introduction to Cell Transport Cells are found in all different types of environments, and these environments are constantly changing. For example, one cell wall, one celled organisms like bacteria can be found on your skin and the ground or in different types of water. Therefore, cells need a way to protect themselves. This job is done by the cell membrane, which is also known as the plasma membrane. Controlling the cell contents. The cell membrane is semi-permeable or selectively permeable, which means that only some molecules can pass through the membrane. If the cell membrane were completely permeable, the inside of the cell would be the same as the outside of the cell. It would be impossible for the cell to maintain homeostasis. Homeostasis means maintaining, maintaining a stable internal environment. For example, if your body cells have a temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's freezing outside, your cells will maintain homeostasis if the temperature of the cell stays the same and does not drop to the outside temperature. How does the cell ensure it is semi-permeable? How does the cell control what molecules enter and leave the cell? The composition of cell membrane helps to control what it can pass through it. Composition of the cell membrane. Molecules of the cell membrane allow it to be semi-permeable. The membrane is made of double layer of phospholipids, a bilayer, and proteins. Recall that phospholipids, being lipids, do not mix with water. It is this quality that allows them to form the outside barrier of the cell. A single phospholipid molecule has two parts, a polar head that is hydrophilic or water-loving, a fatty acid tail that is hydrophobic or water-fearing. All right, so here's the diagram. I'm going to read the caption. The cell membrane is made of a phospholipid bilayer, two layers of phospholipid molecules. Notice the polar head group of the phospholipid is attached to the phosphate, and the tails are two fatty acid chains. The head group and the tails are attached by a glycerol backbone. All right, on with the, the section. There is water found on both the inside and outside of the cells. Since hydrophilic means water loving, and they want to be near the water, the heads face the inside and outside of the cell where water is found. The water-fearing hydrophilic tails face each other in the middle of the cell membrane. Because water is not found in this space, the phospholipid bilayer, allows the cell to stay intact in a water-based environment. An interesting quality of the plasma membrane is that it is very fluid and constantly moving, like a soap bubble. The fluid nature of the membrane is important in maintaining homeostasis. It allows the proteins in the membrane to float to areas where they are needed. Due to the composition of the cell membrane, small molecules such as oxygen and carbon dioxide can pass freely through the membrane, but other molecules, especially large molecules, cannot easily pass through the plasma membrane. These molecules need assistance to get across the membrane. That assistance will come in the form of transport proteins. All right, 3.9 summary. The cell membrane is selectively permeable, meaning only some molecules can get through. The cell membrane is made of a double layer of phospholipids, each with a hydrophilic water-loving head and a hydrophobic water-fearing tail. Again, did not assign the explore more this time. I did assign the review questions. So 3.9 review number one. Why is the plasma membrane considered selectively permeable? Why is this important? Number two. Explain the composition of the cell membrane. Number three, explain the arrangement of the phospholipids in the membrane.
All right, next is the fusion. So I'll stop this video and I'll start a new one.